Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy is endured forever. Welcome once again to this service hosted by the Faith, Hope, and Love Center. And we are returning to our theme, Back to the Basics, Part 7. And we will be speaking today about whatever happened to old-fashioned consecration. Oh, we want to get into the Word. But before we do, we are welcoming the worship team to lead us in a time of worship. And then we invite you to join us in a time of deep intercession before we get to the ministry of the Word, Part 7, Back to the Basics, Whatever Happened to Old Fashioned Consecration.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. We say thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, all that you have blessed us with. We give you praise, honor, and glory for you are faithful. You are mighty. You are awesome in all your ways and all of your doing. We worship you and we exalt you as the true and living God, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the ruler of our ages, the rule of our soul. His name is Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh God, our sovereign Lord, our sovereign King. And today we come before you bringing our request. You say, make your request known unto God. And Lord God, we make our request known unto you. You say, pray without ceasing. And Lord God, we come bringing our request before you, lifting our land, lifting our country, lifting up this world that we're living in, lifting up our families, lifting up our communities, lifting up our church. And Lord, we ask for forgiveness. Forgive us, Lord, for we 
have sinned. We have fallen short. We have done things that wasn't pleasing in your sight. Even, oh God, as individuals, even as families, even as communities, even as a church, even as a nation, even as a world, oh God, we have sinned. And your sin has come up before you in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, today, as a people, we repent from our wicked ways and we take heed to the word of God. We repent, we repent, we repent. And we say, forgive us, Lord, heal our land. Forgive us, Lord, heal us. We pray in the name of Jesus, even as a church, we pray for our pastors. Oh God, we call a time of fasting, a time of prayer a time of intercession oh God and we say intervene on our behalf oh God we pray we repent oh God on behalf of our pastors oh God on behalf of our congregations oh God and we say forgive us Lord we have been disobedient we have done things our own way and we say God forgive us forgive us as a church as a body of Christ we say forgive us oh God and we lay aside every every heavy weight and we take heed to the word of God for the word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto the path show us the way as a church oh God and we say God forgive us forgive our country come forgive our prime ministers forgive oh God every region we pray in the name of Jesus oh God and we ask you to do something marvelous something new something fresh we say send forth a fresh wind a fresh breeze oh God and Lord God minister to this region in the name of Jesus minister oh God to the Caribbean we pray in the name of Jesus minister to Trinidad and Tobago do something new we speak for a revival revive Trinidad and Tobago revive this region revive oh God this world today oh God send forth a word send forth a revival send forth a new wind a new season in this time and this season minister to your men of God we pray in the name of Jesus touch our hearts touch our minds touch our souls, touch our bodies, touch our spirits. We pray in the name of Jesus and we speak for the revival. Revive us and we won't be the same. Revive us and we will be restored in the name of Jesus. Revive our homes. Every man, every father, every head of the home, every marriage. Oh God, we say revive by your power and by your anointing in the name of Jesus. You say seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things would be added we say oh god touch our families touch our homes touch us as individuals we pray touch our churches touch our nation we pray in the name of jesus oh god in this pandemic time oh god we say heal where healing is needed touch where our touch is needed deliver where deliverance and we come against the attacks of the enemy and oh god we cancel the works of satan now in the name of jesus and we thank you for all that you've done we thank you for all that you're doing all that you're about to do and we say touch our nation heal our land Revive us and restore us. A new season and a new day. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Thank you, worship team, and thank you, intercessor. Now we must get to the ministry of the word. Back to the basics. Part 7. What? ever happened to old-fashioned consecration and we are reading from the book of second chronicles chapter 29 and we're reading several verses in second chronicles 29 go grab a bible and follow with us uh, get your notepad whatever happened to old-fashioned consecration and i'm reading second chronicles 29 1 to 5 hezekiah began to reign when he was five and twenty years old, and he reigned nine and twenty years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. 
he in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. And he brought in the priests and the Levites and gathered them together in, into the east street and said unto them, Hear me, you Levites, sanctify now yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. We now need, need to read 2 Chronicles 29. Verses 31 and 2 Chronicles 31, verse 21. Then Hezekiah answered and said, Now you have consecrated yourselves unto the Lord. Come near and bring sacrifices and thank offerings into the house of the Lord. And the congregation brought in sacrifices and thank offerings. And as many as were of Free heart, burnt offerings. Verse 21 of 31. And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God and in the law and in the commandment to seek his God, he did it with all his heart and prospered. Sadly, the message of holiness and consecration has fallen on hard times. From the pulpit to the pew, there has been a decline of the call and insistence on holiness before the Lord. Men are parading as ministers of the gospel in word and song. But after the performances on stage for the audience and fans, there is the absence of a consecrated lifestyle to validate the public religious rhetoric. Consecration and holiness is no longer a prerequisite for service, ministry, church, and national revival. Back to the basics then means we must return to the basic message and lifestyle of consecration to the Lord in both our private and public life. We must learn from the approach of Hezekiah, who was used by God to bring forth reform and revival to a backslidden Judah as he called her to a life of consecration. Let us speak to you about eight background information about Hezekiah before we get into this call to consecration. Number one, Hezekiah was a young man when he became king. Just 25 years old, he was the 13th king of Judah and he reigned for 29 years. Number two, Hezekiah inherited 16 years of unprecedented evil by his father Ahaz. Ahaz caused the people to worship the brazen serpent that Moses built in the wilderness. Ahaz had the temple defiled the doors were shut, broken down, and debris all oh, were scattered all over the temple. Sacrifices and offerings and feast days had ceased. The priests neglected their responsibility, and the people were in national rebellion. Such was the legacy left by his father Ahaz. Number three. Hezekiah reigned in the midst of two superpowers, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, and Berodach, Bladan, king of Babylon. In 2 Kings 20:12, we are told at that time, Berodach, Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present unto Hezekiah, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick. Number four. Hezekiah's task and responsibility was to bring the people to a place of repentance, reform, resistance, and revival. Number five, Hezekiah had to possess the qualities to accomplish this phenomenal task. We read in 2 Kings 18, 6 and 7, 
and 2 Chronicles 31.20. Some remarkable qualities of this 25-year-old king. The Bible says in 2 Kings 18.6, he clave to the Lord. He departed not from following him. He kept the commandments which the Lord God commanded Moses. In 2 Kings 8.7, and the Lord was with him and he prospered wherever he went forth. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. In 18.8, he smote the Philistines even unto Gaza and the borders thereof from the tower of the watchmen to the fenced city. You peed across the second chronicles 31 and verse 20. And thus did Hezekiah throughout all Judah and wrought that which was good and right and truth. Before the Lord his God. What remarkable qualities of Hezekiah. Number six. Hezekiah saw that consecration was in fact the prerequisite for reform and revival. Look at 2 Chronicles 29.31. Then Hezekiah answered and said, Now you have consecrated yourself unto the Lord. Come near and bring sacrifices and thanks offering into the house of the Lord, and the congregation brought in sacrifices and thanks offering, as many as were of a free heart burnt offering. Notice what Hezekiah did. Now that they consecrated to God, he says, you now qualify to morally bring sacrifices and thanksgiving unto the Lord. Number seven, Hezekiah was sensitive to those whose heart was in the right place but did not get a time or the chance and the opportunity to be consecrated. And so sometimes when there is a move of God, when there is a revival, men can become like Pharisees and legalistic. But look at the sensitivity of Ezekiah in 2 Chronicles chapter 30, verses 17 through to 20. For there were many in the congregation that were not sanctified. Therefore. The Levites had the charge of the killing of the Passover for everyone that was not clean to sanctify them unto the Lord. For a multitude of the people, even many of Ephraim, Manasseh, Issachar, and Zebulun, had not cleansed themselves, yet they did eat the Passover otherwise that it was written. Look what Hezekiah did. But Hezekiah prayed for them, saying, The good Lord pardon everyone. And so, that prepare it is hard to see God, the Lord God of his fathers, though he was not cleansed according to the purification of the sanctuary, and the Lord listened to Hezekiah and healed the people. And so they were not cleansed according to the ritual purification, but oh, Their heart was prepared by Almighty God, so Hezekiah was sensitive to that reality, and he prayed, and God heard and healed the people. Number eight, the impact of Hezekiah's repentance and reform. Because Hezekiah placed consecration as the prerequisite for service, the Bible declares in 2 Chronicles 29, Verses 35 and 36, and also the burnt offering were in abundance with the fat of the peace offerings and the drink offerings for every burnt offering. So the service of the house of the Lord was set in order. And here's what, and Hezekiah rejoiced. And all the people that God had prepared the people for the thing was done suddenly. What thing? God sent a mighty wave of reform, renewal, and revival because Hezekiah understood the necessity of consecration. Oh yes, whatever happened to old-fashioned consecration. When we return, we would speak to a return to consecration using Hezekiah as the template found in Chronicles chapter 29.
Welcome back. Back to the basics. Whatever happened to old-fashioned consecration? A call to consecration using ah, the model and the template and the example of Hezekiah. Consecration simply means setting yourself apart for God. A message of holiness. So in Hezekiah's mind, consecration came before participation. We are told in Chronicles 29, verse 5, Hezekiah said to them, Hear me, you Levites, sanctify now yourselves, sanctify the house of the Lord, and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. And then you note in verse 31, he says, Now you have consecrated. You can now bring the sacrifices and thanksgiving. Now that you have consecrated yourself, you can bring free will offering because consecration came before participation. The modern church have this order reverse. People are allowed to get involved in ministry without consecration. Hoping that their participation will jumpstart their consecration. But that is not how the biblical framework operates. Sanctify yourself. And now that you have sanctified yourself, now that you have consecrated yourself, now you bring your sacrifices. Now you bring your thanksgiving. Consecration must come before participation. Number two. For Hezekiah. Consecration came before praise and worship. Consecration came before praise. Notice in 2 Chronicles chapter 29, the Bible is clear from verse 25. And he set the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals, with psaltery, with harps, according to the commandment of David and of God the king Seir and Nathan the prophet. So was the commandment of the Lord by his prophets. And the Levites stood with the instruments of David and the priests with the trumpets. Listen to this in Chronicles 29.7. And Hezekiah commanded to offer the burnt offerings upon the altar. And when the burnt offering began, the song of the Lord began also with the trumpets and with the instruments ordained by David, king of Israel. And all the congregation worshipped and the singing sang, the singer sang, and the trumpeter sang it, and all this continued until the burnt offering was finished. Consecration before worship. Consecration before the singer sang. Consecration before the trumpeter sang their trumpet. Consecration first, and then praise. There we parade the altar of God with our offering. There we parade the altar of God with our praise and worship. There we parade the altar of God with our instruments, the trumpets, our drums, our guitars. But yet, the people, the people, the people, they are not consecrated before Almighty God. Hezekiah knew if God is going to pour a revival in the midst of Judah, there must be consecration before praise and worship. We are told in 2 Chronicles 30:15. Then they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the second month. And the priests and the Levites were ashamed and sanctified themselves. And then they went to bring the burnt offering before Almighty God. Yes, we must understand that if there is no consecration, our worship is vain. Our offering is vain. We are told in 2 Chronicles 29 and verse 30. Moreover, Hezekiah the king and the priest commanded the Levites to sing praise unto the Lord with the words of David and of Asaph the say, And they sang praises with gladness and they bowed their heads. And worship. And in verse 31, know this. Then Hezekiah answered and said, Now you have consecrated yourself unto the Lord. Come now and sacrifice and bring thanksgiving unto God. Why? Because consecration came before praise. Number three. For Hezekiah, consecration before position. Oh yes, you heard me right. Consecration before position. 
you would understand the hierarchy where you have the priests, then the Levites, and then the people. So the priests were higher than the Levites. But here's what the Bible declares from 2 Chronicles 29, verse 32 to 34. And the number of the burnt offerings which the congregation brought were three score and ten bullocks and a hundred rams and two hundred lambs. And all these were for a burnt offering to the Lord. Verse 33. And the consecrated things were six hundred oxen and three thousand sheep. Verse 34. But the priests were too few. So that they could not flay all the burnt offerings. Wherefore, their brethren, the Levites, did help them till the work was ended. And until the other priests had sanctified themselves. For the Levites were more upright in heart to sanctify themselves than the priests. Consecration before position. In our modern church, position and office seem to be the priority. But as Hezekiah understood it, while the priests, their responsibility was to flay the offering, they were few. Why? Because the other priests had not yet sanctified themselves. And so, Hezekiah drew on the Levites because they were more upright in heart than their brethren, the priests. Hezekiah was not preoccupied with name and office and title. He was more preoccupied with the uprightness of heart. Some of us as spiritual leaders, we may need to step out of office, step out of service, step out of preaching, step out, step out, step out, and let those who are under us take the lead in the ministry because there are many persons in the congregation, they may be more upright in heart than those who have the office and position. And so that might create an offense for many. But God is not preoccupied with all these office men are so uh, preoccupied now with egos and logos and names and titles and the right reverend doctor or apostle, but not consecrated. God is concerned with consecration before position. Number four, consecration comes before programs. Consecration comes before programs. You see, in the scheme of the Mosaic schedule, there was a certain day to keep the Passover. But what Hezekiah discovered, while the program rolled out and schedule, he recognized that they could not keep the Passover on the day the program was assigned and allotted because the people were not consecrated. Read 2 Chronicles 30, verses 1, 2, 3, and 4, and here's what the Bible says. And Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover unto the Lord God of Israel. For the king, 2 Chronicles 32, had taken counsel and his princes and all the congregation in Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month. For they could not keep it at that time. Why? Because the priests had not sanctified themselves sufficiently. Neither had the people gathered themselves together to Jerusalem and the thing pleased the king and all the congregation because consecration came before program. Sometimes the modern church, we are bent on keeping certain agendas. We are bent on keeping the schedule as documented in our minutes. We are bent on achieving things based on our strategic plans. But hear me, if we are going to invite the move and the hand of Almighty God, you may have some dates scheduled in your calendar for certain types of activities. It is better to put it off 
until the people are sanctified sufficiently because you were not driven. Uh, Hezekiah was not driven by programs. He was driven by the sense of the sanctification of the people. Many churches and organizations are more driven by programs than the holiness of the people. Put off the program. Call it off. Oh, yes. You may say to me, preacher, we've spent so much money to put this program on. We did so much rehearsal and so much practice. And oh, how would it look that we are disorganized? It is better to look disorganized and call off the program than to go there with persons who have not yet sufficiently sanctified and consecrated themselves before Almighty God. Number five. Consecration before popularity. Oh yes. The Bible declares in 2 Chronicles 29, verse 2, 10, 20, and 2 Kings 18, 5. The Bible says, And Hezekiah did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. Now it is in my heart, says Isaiah, to make a covenant with the Lord God of Israel, that his fierce wrath may turn away from us. Then Hezekiah the king rose up early, gathered the rulers of the city and went up to the house of the Lord. Hezekiah's mind was bent on doing right by Almighty God, so he made a covenant with God. It is not surprising then in 2 Kings 18.5, the Bible declares Hezekiah trusted the Lord God of Israel so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah, not any that were before him. Hezekiah's fame and popularity. Oh, it went before him. It went after him. This man, why was he so popular? Why was he held in such esteem? Because his heart was bent on consecration. He was not about public imaging. He was not about popularity. Oh, yeah, today we have a drive. Who know me and who don't know me? And how could you connect with me? I am dishing out call cards left, right, and center. All about putting my name and the name of my ministry out there. And while we use all of the social media to speak to who's like and who like and who have visited your site, ultimately what we need to have is consecration before popularity. Number six. We need consecration before prosperity. In 2 Chronicles 31 to 21 and 2 Kings 18, 7 it says, And in every work that he began in the service of the house of God and in the law and in the commandment to seek his God, he did it with all his heart. And guess what? God prospered him. Oh, the same thought is repeated in 2 Kings 18, 7. And the Lord was with him and he prospered him wherever he went. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. Hey, tell you this. Because Hezekiah consecrated himself, God made him prosper. Oh, the modern church. We have the prosperity gospel. Everything is bless me this and bless me this. And God will do this for you and God will do that for you. You just plant a seed here and plant a seed there. But there is no prerequisite of consecration. We are more about prosperity than holiness. Prosperity than living right. Prosperity than seeking the face of Almighty God. Prosperity and aligning with Assyria than rebelling against all of the alliances contrary to the purposes of Almighty God. God. Oh yes, my friend, if we are going to return to that life of consecration, there must be consecration before participation, consecration before praise, consecration before position, consecration before programs, consecration before popularity, and consecration before prosperity. Back to the basics. Whatever happened to old-fashioned consecration and holiness calling you back today church of the living god calling you back servant of the living god whether you're apostle a prophet evangelist pastor teacher we are calling the church back to a life of consecration and holiness so that we would see reform revival and the move of god in our day god richly bless you Kelly on the beat, boy.
people. Caribbean Christian and dancing in 